Hello, my name is Miss Melissa and I am a teaching artist in the PACE program with the Acadiana Center for the Arts in the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today I'm here because we are going to make a collage of a blue jay in his habitat. This is what we're going to make today. And you're going to learn about a famous artist named John Audubon in the process. First, I'm going to show you some famous pictures that he created, which are right behind me, all these pictures of birds. I'll tell you a little story about him and show you where he's from. And then you're going to actually create your bird and the tree branch that it lives in by drawing and then cutting and gluing. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm going to show you the supplies that you need so we can get started. Okay, so first you're going to need, let me show you, four sheets of paper for your collage. The green and brown is going to be for the leaves and the tree branch, so you need a green and brown paper. And the blue and the white is going to be for the actual blue jay. Okay, now I also have a background paper that I chose, so you're going to need that as well. I chose a light blue for a light blue sky. If you want um, a sunset sky, you can have yellow, pink, orange, any color you want really for your background paper is fine, meaning the part we're going to glue. So you need one, one background paper, your color of choice, and you're going to need a green, a brown, a blue, and a white paper. Now these are construction paper sheets. If you don't have colored construction paper, you could use any kind of colored paper. And if you don't have colored paper at all, then you can just use white paper. Oops. And you can use crayons to color them, okay? So, for example, when I start drawing and cutting out on these sheets, you're going to do the same. If you don't have colored sheets of construction paper, you're going to just draw and cut these out and then you'll, you can pause the video and color it to make it the same. So you'll just have a little extra work to do, which is fine. If you like to do art, you're going to have fun today. So this is white paper and crayons just in case you don't have colored sheets. Okay? So besides the paper, you're going to need a black marker something in black. I'm going to use a black marker. If you don't have a black marker, you can use a black colored pencil, a black crayon, anything, anything black. Okay. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, a glue bottle, some glue, um, and some uh, paper towels to dry your glue or a napkin. Okay. Um, if you don't have glue, you could always use uh, any kind of tape that you have around the house, which is fine, but I prefer glue. All right, so go ahead and you can pause the video, go get your supplies, and I'm gonna show you some of these really nice art prints. All right, so this is where John Audubon, let me find it, was from. This little island on the world map called Haiti. And he was born there and he, tr he traveled to the United States of America, which is where I live. I actually live in a state called Louisiana, which is right here. Now, John Audubon, I don't have a picture of him, but you can look him up. He actually um, spent a lot of time traveling in the United States of America. He traveled all over and he ended up painting birds in their natural habitat. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if do you know what habitat means? A natural habitat is where the birds actually spend a lot of their time, where they hung out. It's like their home. Okay, so if you look at these, I'm sure you probably recognize these birds, huh? There's a brown pelican, a great horned owl. Notice where, where are they? They're on these big tree branches. And then look at this one. This is a type of swan. And a lot of times we see swans in the water. Okay? 
Now, since I'm from Louisiana, I thought it was pretty neat because we have those types of birds in Louisiana as well. Oh, and what kind of birds do you see here? Do you recognize these? These are some paintings that he made of hummingbirds. It looks like they're drinking nectar from the flower. And here is a raven in his habitat. Okay, and then here is a, now this isn't a blue jay. I do, um, he, he does have a painting of a blue jay. I just don't have that print. These are blue birds, but look at what these birds are doing. See that? Do you recognize this bird? It's a cardinal. That's the male. This is the female. Now I have lots of cardinals and blue jays in my backyard. I even have hummingbirds in my backyard. I have mockingbirds. So these are some examples of John Audubon's prints. Okay. And he has a whole lot more. So what he ended up doing was he lived in different places in the United States. He ended up um, moving to Louisiana and he lived in New Orleans for a little bit. He traveled around a lot and then he ended up moving and settling down in a place called New York, which is another state um, besides Louisiana. That is where he lived his most of his life, uh, the end of his life. And he published a very big book called Birds of America. It was huge with all kinds of birds that lived in the United States. John Audubon even had a magazine that was named after him called Audubon Magazine. It featured all kinds of different birds. And remember how I told you that he lived in Louisiana for a little while in the city of New Orleans? Well, if you ever travel to New Orleans and go to the, uh, the zoo there, the zoo is actually named after him. It's called the Audubon Zoo. So not only did he leave the world with his beautiful prints of birds, he has a magazine and a zoo named after him. And I don't know if I told you this, but uh, whenever he was born in Haiti, that was 300 years ago. So he was born in the 1700s. So, um, and we still see his prints today. So I hope you enjoyed looking at them. Now we're gonna create your blue jay in, in its own habitat. Okay, so we are ready to start. So I have my papers that I need, the blue and white for my blue jay and the green and brown for my tree branch with the leaves. So I'm gonna stack them up. I'm gonna stack them all up and I want to fold it in half. Now, if this is too hard for you to fold all of them, you can do one at a time or two, okay? So you make your corners touch and the sides. I'm gonna use my table and press on it, okay? So let me do that and it's not, you're not folding it to where it looks like a hot dog. You're folding it to where it's like a book, all right? <clears throat> so go ahead and fold all your pages and press. If you have to do one at a time, you can pause it and come back. And there we have it. So once you have all of your pages folded, I'm gonna take each one and I'm gonna cut all along the line so we can start cutting our paper. We can do it together, okay? I open my scissors up all the way and I slowly slide the paper see that in back of the scissors and cut so for all of these we're only going to need a piece the other half we won't need okay so one half we need one half we don't so let's keep cutting together open and close and i'll slide the paper back open and close all right, I'm going to do each one because we only need half. Now, this is a normal size of paper. So if you go to the store and you buy construction paper, this would be the normal size. Okay. Again, if you have white paper, you're still going to just cut your four sheets of white paper because you'll actually color them. 
All right, so now, now I have half sheets of the papers that I need and the other halves, I don't need them. So I can put them aside. Okay, very good. So now I'm gonna show you what to draw on each so we can make your branch and your um, leaves and your bird. I wanna start making my tree branch first. So your brown paper is gonna go the long way. And I want you to think about a tree branch. And we're gonna just draw a straight line just like that going all the way at the bottom. And that's gonna be our big part of our tree branch, okay? Now, if you look at the shapes that I have here, we're only gonna need to use these shapes today. Let's go over them together. Circle, oval, triangle, and rectangle. Very good, easy stuff, right? So to make our tree branch, we're gonna use just the what? Rectangle. Can you guess what shape we're gonna need to make our leaves? If you were thinking oval, you are correct. So, um, I'm gonna show you, do you see this up close? You could see the rectangle shaped tree branch here. And now we're gonna make two smaller rectangles with one, two, three, four little rectangular branches, okay? So now, what I'm gonna do is draw two lines, one and two, on top to make the small part of my branch. Do you see that? So I have one rectangle and then two rectangles. So now my tree branch is done. I just need to make some little pieces, some little bitty pieces. So what I can do at the bottom, because I like using the, the edges of my paper because it's straight. I'm gonna draw a line and make some small ones. One, two, three, four. Now, if you wanna make like 10 little bitty branches, this is where the leaves are gonna stem off from. You can, but I'm just gonna put four, okay? So again, we just made one, two, three, four little branches. All right, so we have one big rectangle, two medium, and one, two, three, four little ones. Now we're gonna make four leaves. And I'm just gonna look at my thumb, okay? So my thumb is about this big. You can make a leaf about as big as your thumb. And it's an oval shape. So I'm gonna make four. One, two, three, and four, okay? Now, leaves usually have a straight line that runs in the middle of them, and that's how the plant gets its nutrients, and then it has some straight lines that go from the center out. It kind of looks like a letter V. I'm putting straight. You can put curvy if you want, however you want to do it. I'm just going to draw a few straight lines going out from the center to the outside of my leaf. It looks like a letter V. Okay. Oh, I forgot to add the texture on my tree branch. Tree branches have bark. So I'm just going to draw a couple of maybe some wavy, a little bit of wavy straight, you know, mix it up. Wavy and straight lines. I'm going to go down and I'm gonna go across just a few okay to show my tree bark and I'm gonna put a few here kind of little squiggly lines and there we have it so we just finished drawing our tree branches and our leaves so now we're gonna make the bird so I'm gonna take these down. Now you're probably drawing on your um, on a table, 
Okay, so I'm putting this on the wall so it's easier for you to see. So now you're gonna need your white paper and your blue paper. Okay, so we need three parts for each. We need to make the head of the bird, the body, and the tail. So let me show you my picture. So what shape is the head? If you were thinking circle, very good. What shape is the, the belly or the center of its body? If you were thinking oval, very good. And then the tail. The tail is kind of, kind of like a triangle. It's a long triangle. So we're gonna draw those three parts and we're gonna make all of them fit. So at the top, I'm gonna draw a circle like this, and I'm gonna draw an oval, and I'm kind of pretending that I can, you know, see my bird in all its parts. And then I'm going to make a straight line right here, and draw a triangle for its tail, okay? You see how I filled up my whole paper? So if, if you drew your head, the body, and the tail up here, and you have all of that room, you're gonna have to make it bigger. You can just turn it over on the back. So a big chunk of your paper is gonna be an oval, and then a circle, which is about half that size. And the, and the, the tail's pretty much as long as the body. So if you need to pause until you get the shape, that you want and the size, you can, you can always come back. But remember, each, each shape is gonna fill up your whole paper. All right, so now, once you have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these out, okay? We're gonna cut it out together. So, I'm gonna do it with you. So first thing I want to do is open my scissors and you can um, go, I'm going to cut on the black, but I want to, I'd like to see the black on the bird because the blue jay does have black, white, and blue. So you can leave the black line showing, okay? Take your time. I'm going to cut tail out and you could see the black now I'm gonna cut and it's always better to go bigger than smaller and if you drew it small you know what you can have a baby blue jay <laughs> okay so let's cut together notice how when I'm cutting the paper is always in the back of my scissors I'm never cutting like this nipping it always keep your scissors open close and you can just keep moving your paper and sliding the paper, see, it just slid. See that, or sliding the scissors. However, always keep the paper in the back of the scissors jaw, kind of like an alligator's mouth. You know, alligators go chomp, chomp, right? All right, so now I have what? The oval, which is the main part of my bird, and now I'm gonna cut out the head. Once we cut out all of the pieces, then we can put them together. And there's the head. Now guess what we're gonna do? We are going to use those pieces to draw the blue feathers for the bird. These are the white feathers. We need to make blue ones. So with your circle, you're gonna put it on your blue paper and trace, we're gonna trace each one, okay? So I trace the circle, however you wanna fit it, because we're gonna cut these out too. Let's do this one here. I'm tracing the oval, now if it moves, you can just put it back, okay? Oops, see I moved it. You have to hold it down, and if you need some 
some assistance or somebody to help you hold it, you can always pause and come back. I will be here waiting for you. You see? That's okay, I could always cut that off. So now I have the face, the body, and then now I'm gonna trace the what? The triangle, which is what part? The tail. So I'm holding my triangle and I'm using my marker. Very good, and we have the exact same thing. So, but here's the, um, the trick. <laughs> We don't need the whole part of the blue. Now the tail we need, we need to keep the tail like it is. But for the circle in the oval, guess what? We only need half of it. We just need half. So watch what I'm gonna do. This is about halfway. So I'm gonna put a dot where I think halfway is. I'm gonna put a dot inside my oval where I think halfway is. Now watch, I'm gonna draw a curvy line, not a straight, but a curvy, from the top all the way going through my circle to show where halfway is. So instead of it being a perfect straight line, we're just gonna have a slight curve, okay? And we leave the tail alone. So you traced all three. We're gonna cut out the whole tail, okay? And we're gonna only cut out the half that I want. So let's do this together. And if, again, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video. Keep your scissors, those out that alligator mouth, keep it open nice and big. Chomp and chomp. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Cause remember Blue Jays, we wanna see the black. We want to see the black, white, and blue. Now, you can cut either part. I'm gonna cut this curvy part. Actually, yeah, I want you to cut the, uh, the left side. You'll see when we put it together. So, I just need a half of my circle, okay? And now I'm gonna need this half, the left side, this side of my oval. It really doesn't matter which one you choose because uh, we're gonna put it on, it's, it's even, so. Okay, so now I have all of my pieces. I might as well just keep cutting Let's go ahead and cut our leaves out now. Okay. I'm just gonna take my time. Look how, can you see what I'm doing? I'm turning my paper and my scissors while my scissor, scissors are open. You see how the jaw, I have to try to think of the alligator's teeth, the back of its jaw. The jaw is open. I never go all the way down because I wanna make sure it cuts good. It always cuts good when your scissors are open in the back. And I can just keep turning it because it's an oval shape, okay? We have two left. always want to keep your fingers away from your scissors. You see how I'm holding my leaf? Just at the tip. I'm not putting my fingers in the way of my scissors. You don't want to do that. Okay, so now you should have one, two, three, and four leaves. So what do we have left? Well, we have our branches. So let's cut our branches together. I'm gonna open and close. Oops, try to keep it in there and slide the paper. See that? Now here's my big branch. 
There's my big branch. So now I have my two smaller ones, or my medium, should I say. Oops. Tape is on the back of there. There we go. Okay. Now you're going to be cutting at your table. I'm cutting standing up, so <clears throat> um, I have to catch my paper. So, you know, make sure you don't put your hands anywhere by these scissors. There's my medium. And now we just need the four. Oops, see it fell. So the four small pieces, I'm going to go ahead and get that. So if you were cutting, you should be cutting at your table. And if I was cutting at my table, it wouldn't have fell. It would have fell on the table, not the floor. So let's cut these. We're going to cut that. One. Two. Three and four. So now we have four little branches. And we are finished cutting. Now we can put our bird together on the paper and the branch. Let's make sure we have all of our pieces cut out before we glue. A long tree branch, two medium tree branches, and you should have four of these little bitty tree branches. We also drew and cut out four leaves. The oval, white oval for the larger body of the bird. The circle, that's white for the head of the bird and the long triangle tail. Same thing, except for the blue. These are gonna be the feathers that go on top of the white feathers. Okay, so we have half of a circle, half of an oval, and the whole blue triangle. So this is all we need to make our collage. Well, what's a collage? A collage is when you glue, it's a type of art where basically you glue papers. Anytime you glue papers to a picture, it's called a collage. Really quick before we start, I wanna show you a, um, a, a real photograph of a blue jay. Now, I'm gonna, it's from a book. It's an actual photograph that was used to print on this book. Do you see that? This blue jay has the blue feathers on top of the white feathers with lots of black. What color do you notice for the beak and his eyes and his feet? Those are black as well. We're gonna use the markers to create that. So we're gonna draw a very little bit on our collage and that's fine. You can draw on a collage. We already did. We made the bark and the veins. The bark went on what? The bark went on the tree and then the veins went on the leaf. You see the main shapes of his body and his head and his tail? So this is a real photograph. There, it's a photographic print. So I thought that was neat. I meant to show you that earlier. All right, let's start gluing. Whenever, oh, and then your paper, remember, I chose a blue. You can choose whatever you want. Whenever you glue, usually I put dots, okay? But since this is very thin, I'm just going to draw a very, very, very thin line. And notice I said draw. Yes, you can draw with glue because I made sure my orange cap was touching, but I don't want to put a lot. So I made the orange cap touch the brown paper and I used the cap to smear it. And then I'm going to, this is about halfway. I want to go below that. About right here, I'm going to glue my tree branch, okay? I'll make it a little straighter. If you want to put it, we can put it a little bit higher there because we'll have some room. So towards the bottom, but you know, leave a little bit of room. So now what we can do is glue our medium branch from the end. Now we don't need the whole thing. You see how I, and we're going to make like a, um, what 
letter does this look like laying on its side? Do you see a letter Y? That's what it's gonna look like. So where my paper is sticking out, I'm just gonna fold it. I want it to stay inside my blue paper. And so now I can cut off those little pieces that I don't want. Okay, so go ahead and get your scissors and cut out the little pieces that you don't need. So we can glue those. Okay. So again, I'm going to put, I'm going to draw very thin. I'm going to take this and smudge it. You can glue it right on the end. I'm going to make like a sideways letter Y. I'm just going to put a very thin line of glue. And you could use your the side of your cap. I'm not squeezing when I use the side of my cap. I'm just kind of smudging it around. Okay? And I like that. You can even put it going to the edge if you want. That looks kind of neat. Okay, so now it's time to glue our little branches. Now, I have one, I have two on this branch and two on that branch. You can put them anywhere as you want. And these are tiny pieces of paper, so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue, a dot, and I like to use my cap to smudge it. So I think I'm going to put one here. Now, you can always make more. You can always make more little branches. Maybe you want 10 of them or 12, and you'll have, you know, a branch that's full of leaves. Uh, let's see, where do I want to put this one? Yeah, I could put it here. And one more. So we just use four. Now, it is the springtime, so it's another really neat thing why I'm so glad we're doing this because I don't know about you but I have seen lots of birds visiting me in my backyard blue our leaves now just kind of smudge it around there we go put a little more I made these leaves a lot bigger than my other one just so you could see it better And put glue on your other one. So yes, I've seen lots and lots and lots of birds chirping. A lot of plants and flowers are blooming. So I'm just gonna smear a little bit. Can have. Yeah, I think I might turn this one. You can change the position. Actually. Not, I don't have much room right here. So look, I just picked that up. I'm gonna put my leaf going this way. There we go. I like that better. And I could put one going there. Perfect. You saw what I just did? I just changed the place that I put my, my leaf. You can do that. You're not stuck. Um, you know, there's no right way or wrong way. You decide where you want to put things. I couldn't see my branch, so my little branch. There we go. Now, all right. So all of my pieces are glued, and you saw how that leaf just slid off? We need to hold it down. So this is where I like to use a napkin. And what I'm gonna do, or a paper towel, and I'm gonna count to 10 and just press on the whole thing. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now everything is, is glued down and I could take my napkin and just wipe off the edge. Okay? So now we have our bird left. All right, so for the bird, the first thing I want to do is I want to glue my oval 
Okay, now I wanna put, I don't wanna put my oval too far over here because the tail won't be able to fit. And I don't wanna put it too close to the, the leaves because I need to put his head. So we're just gonna kinda put it in the middle. All right, so take your glue, you can put a dot in the middle, draw on it, and then smudge it around with your cap. At, I'm gonna put it at a diagonal angle and press it. Same thing with the head, which is my circle. I put a dot of glue, draw a little bit with it, draw with the glue and smear it around. I'm gonna put my head right there on top, a little bit over the body. All right, next, I'm gonna put my tail. Little dot of glue, smudge it around, and my tail is gonna connect to my body. Do you see that? A little bit on top, and press it. Now we're gonna put our blue feathers on top. So you take your curve, put your glue, and we're gonna put it to the left side. So, you know, however, which, look, there we go. You see, either way, it doesn't matter which side. You have to put it on this side though. So, I'm gonna make them fit about halfway. There we go. Stick it. Let's do the same thing for the, the, uh, the blue feathers for the body. I'm gonna put it on here. I want to line it up with uh, the head there. There we go. Press. And you could put it angling down if you want. I'm just going to kind of just cover the top. All right. And now the last part is the tail. Put your glue, kind of smudge it around. And notice how I stick, I stuck the uh, blue tail on top of the white, but I want to leave a little bit of space on the bottom. You see? Kind of separated a little bit because its feathers kind of stick out. And I went right on top of here. Just a little bit like that. Okay, let's get our napkin and press. So now our blue jay has blue feathers. Let's count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I was pressing. Now you see this part wasn't sticking up, so that means I need more glue. Just, I got some off of my cap. You can smear it and press. All right, so now we are finished gluing the feathers we are almost done now we can just put the details and how are we going to do that we are going to draw okay this is one of my favorite parts i love making feathers the details of the feathers we need our black so this is what i want you to do the birds feathers you know they're individual and they go straight down so let's put your marker at the top of your triangle and you're just gonna draw. See that? Some straight lines, about four or five going down. All right, now about halfway of that blue triangle, we're gonna draw some bumpy lines. Look, curve, curve, curve. Keep going, curve, curve, curve. And I'm just gonna keep going till I get all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna use my marker to kind of trace over and you can make, you know, the tail connect with 
the body. Now the glue may be a little bit wet. I'm just kind of, I'm just outlining a little bit. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now what I want to do is make some feathers for his wing on top. So about halfway, you can put a dot if you want, if that helps, or a line, about halfway. Now, if you have too much glue underneath, it may not let you draw on top. The glue may have to dry, so you can always pause it and come back. It's a little damp on my paper, but I think I'll be able to draw. So if it's wet, just put it down, come back. But um, if it's not, we can draw right now. So I'm going to make a big curve like that, and then a big curve on top for its top wing. Okay, and same thing. I'm gonna draw lines going straight down. I just drew two of them. And then now I can draw a bunch of bumpy lines like we just did for the tail. Do you see that? You are doing a very good job. Okay, so now we can work on his face. He's got a little bit of black on his belly. For his face, um, we have a, a black area on top of his head. Okay, so watch. I'm just gonna color the bottom part of his head and make a curvy line. Do you see that? Almost like a triangle. Just color a little bit of black at the bottom of his head right here that, that touches his blue feathers on top of his body. Do you see, we just colored a little bit of that. And then you can trace here. You can even trace on top. Just adding some black because we know the blue jay has black, right? Okay, now his eye is actually right almost in the middle of that black line. So with your marker or your crayon or your color pencil, you can make a circle right in the middle of that black line. And then we're going to put his beak reaching out and then we can color that in right next to his eye maybe he's trying to eat something off of the plant huh okay and we're almost done so now we're just gonna add his legs I'm gonna put two straight lines, and I'm gonna color this a little bit. Remember, his beak and his legs are black. Okay. Wow, your blue jay is coming out really nice. And then now, we can put three lines that wrap around the tree for his feet. One, my color two and three and then three over here one two and three that go this way however you want to draw his feet but but I want to show that it's you know wrapping around the tree branch so I kind of drew three curvy lines you can just draw three straight lines if you want and I'm coloring it in just to make it dark I'm making thick lines I guess you could say thick lines for his feet and his legs so we could see it. And his legs and feet match his beak. So I like adding black on top of my blue jay because remember he has what? Black, white, and blue. And I'm just kind of kind of go around and trace and let his uh, wings stand out
okay? So we got to add our final touches with our black marker. I hope you had fun making your blue jay with me in his natural habitat. I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you for joining me today. I, along with the other Pace artists from the Acadiana Center for the Arts, will be posting a new lesson every day at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for kindergarten, first, and second grades. Each grade is tied into the academic curriculum. Some lessons will be in visual art and some lessons will be in dance, also known as creative movements. So be sure to come back and make art with us again tomorrow. If you are interested in supporting programs like this, you can donate to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization who manages this PACE program using this link in the description. Please keep our teaching artists working and share our videos and please keep making art. If you are interested in booking a private lesson with me online, you can contact me by my email in the description box below. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.